welcome back. Now, NICE, the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, has approved a new type of cholesterol-lowering treatment for Royalite on the NHS, the first of its kind. Inclisiran, developed by the pharmaceutical company Novartis, will be offered to hundreds, and hundreds of thousands of people with high cholesterol across England and Wales and could save 30,000 lives in the next decade. But... Some leading doctors oppose NICE guidance on the rollout of the new treatment and say there is a lack of transparency in the decision-making process. Well, one of those opposing the guidance is Dr. Asim Malhotra, a consultant cardiologist and chair of the Public Health Collaboration. He joins me now. This sounds like a, a wonder drug, going to save 30,000 lives in the next decade, approved to be rolled out to hundreds of thousands of people with high cholesterol. Why on <laughs> are you saying no that this shouldn't happen yeah, that's a great question Alex so I think I'd start by saying in the time of universal deceit telling the truth is a revolutionary act and a couple of weeks ago I saw those headlines that 30,000 lives could be saved from this drug and looking at it with all my knowledge and expertise and experience and looking at cholesterol even publishing research on it uh, I concluded very quickly this was a brilliant PR stunt carried out by the pharmaceutical industry that drug that has been approved by NICE undergoing draft guidance um, has not shown to have any benefit in preventing a single heart attack, stroke or death. In fact, the drug company's own trials have already shown that so far and longer term trials are not due to be concluded until 2026. So it was quite extraordinary that NICE uh, managed to put this out. Um, so myself and a number of other very prominent doctors, including the former uh, president of the Royal College of Physicians, Sir Richard Thompson, and personal physician to the Queen of England, um, as well as the chair of uh, British Association of Physicians of Indian Orient, Dr. J.S. Bambrick, and many other doctors and GPs, have written a letter to NICE saying that actually there is no evidence of benefit for this drug, it's going to be a huge waste, there's a lack of transparency in the decision-making process. And this is on a background, uh, Alex, from many years ago, 2015 in fact, um, leading doctors, including general practitioners, uh, overturned and overruled NICE, who wanted to actually expand the use of statin, cholesterol and drugs, to more healthier people, which would have mean, meant that essentially almost everybody over 50 would have been prescribed this drug. And what we realized when we investigated is that most of the panel involved in the decision-making process for NICE were directly linked to the drug company sponsor who, who are manufacturing the drug. When so you say directly is, linked, what, what do you mean? Because surely it'd be a conflict of interest if they were yeah. receiving payments or something yeah, yeah, from yeah. these drug it's, companies. It's flag flag that. flagrant conflict of interest, Alex. So one thing that's really important to understand, and this is a wider system failure issue, uh, before I elaborate a little bit more specifically, is we need to uh, accept that the pharmaceutical industry are there to make profit. They're profit-making businesses. They don't have a legal or fiduciary obligation to give you the best treatment. But the real scandal is that doctors, academic institutions, and medical journals collude with industry for financial gain. And when you look specifically at the guidance coming from NICE over the years on cholesterol, they take their advice from a unit in Oxford University called the Clinical Trial Service Unit. Now, this is not to say that individual academics in those institutions are deliberately misleading people, but there's a huge conflict of interest because this particular unit, which is one of the most influential units in the world when it comes to cholesterol treatment, um, is also one of the ones that receives the most money from the drug industry, hundreds of millions from pharmaceutical uh, industry. Yeah. So, so this needs to be made up front, so there's a big bias there. And when what happens downstream is that doctors are then making clinical decisions on biased and commercially influenced information. So we've got our healthcare system now, which is finance, and eminence-based, not ethical, evidence-based medical practice. So this is the point we're making with this. Now, very briefly, it, when you look at cholesterol, people are kind of maybe a bit confused. Isn't lowering cholesterol good for you? Well, actually, we now realised after several decades of this cholesterol-lowering campaign, it's failed to curb heart disease because actually high cholesterol for most people is not a major risk factor for heart disease. And lowering it, and I actually published research last year with two cardiologists, um, two, sorry, two other cardiologists, in BMJ evidence-based medicine to actually try and look at all the evidence and see does lowering LDL cholesterol in high-risk and low-risk patients for heart disease have any clear relationship with the reduction in heart attack, strokes and death? And we concluded it didn't. didn't. So this myth needs to be busted. Well, listen, we did actually reach out to NICE um, for a right of reply and this is what they said. Inclisiran represents a potential game-changer in preventing thousands of people from dying prematurely from heart attacks and strokes. 
NICE has followed its usual transparency process in developing draft final guidance recommending inclizaran as an option for people with primary hypercholesterol, e hyper I can't even say that, hypercholesterolemia or mixed, oh, the scene, blimey, these are tough words, dyslipidemia. Yes, Did I get that word? Very good, absolutely. Okay, thanks. Who have already had a previous cardiovascular event, such as a heart attack or stroke. This has included extensive engagements with the company and stakeholders, including the Royal College of Physicians, Heart UK and the Primary Care Cardiovascular Society to seek views on the evidence presented. I mean, th they have been quite robust in saying we've done everything transparently, everything properly. All these other independent organisations are backing us on this and, and yet, you're here saying one no we simply don't believe it two these are not independent organizations they all have big financial mm. ties to the drug industry if you follow the money alex yeah. you'll get your answer now without one last thing to say without pointing any specific fingers in general finger at anybody in general the cholesterol lowering industry is based upon fraud let me just define that fraud means deliberate deception for financial gain and an influential minority of people are actually deliberately doing this despite all the evidence to the contrary. Strident comments, but you're not the only one, are you, making these? Because we can also now speak to another signatory of the letter, Dr. Malcolm Kendrick, cholesterol expert and GP. Uh, thank you for joining us, Malcolm. Do, do you completely agree with what Asim is saying? I mean, he's gone quite far in suggesting that the cholesterol lowering industry is, is based on fraud. Do you back him on that? Well, yeah, on the strict terms of the word fraud, I suppose I'd have to. Um, Asim and I uh, have known each other for a while. He's he's um, he's very bold. I tend to be a bit more cowardly in my pronounce pronouncements in this area. But there is no doubt. I mean, we were talking about this this morning, and I said, oh, the studies that they're using are called Orion. And I said, Orion, I know that. I'm familiar with that. Those are the studies that are being done by the Clinical Trials Service Unit in Oxford. And these are the people that actually run the cholesterol treatment trialist collaboration who hold all the information about cholesterol lowering drugs and statins and point blank refuse to let anybody else see it. So, I mean, we're in a world that they're talking about transparency, but where is the transparency? I mean, they state in their own, the NICE have said in their own um, information about Inclisaran, they've done a deal with um, Novartis about how much this is going to cost and nobody's allowed to see it. So we have some completely untransparent financial skullduggery going on here. Why the need to hide the fact that they've done a deal to make this cheaper? I mean, I looked at the calculated that if everybody that's got the condition known as hypercholesterolemia, which is how you say it apparently, were to take this drug, it would cost the UK half a billion pounds. And that's just for one of the groups that's being offered this, half a billion. Now, if you look at the other group, the mixed dyslipidemia group, they've been very unclear as to what that means. But we're probably talking two to three million people here in this grouping. This would cost billions a year. And there is absolutely no evidence from any of their studies yeah. that it has any impact on heart attacks, strokes, or mortality. This is not actually a brand new type of drug. There's two others very similar that are already on the market. And I looked at these drugs years ago, and we found that whilst they reduced the cholesterol level by up to 40%, there was no impact. In fact, there was a slight increase in overall mortality. That is, more people taking the drug died, and more people taking the drugs died from cardiovascular disease. These are just facts, and yet they are spun to us as if these are magical drugs, but it's, it's, it's rubbish. Let me, let me go back to the, the statement from NICE. I can now uh, read you the second half, which says, the draft guidance acknowledges there is no data directly comparing incl inclizaran with other treatments, and that here is also no long-term evidence yet on inclizaran's effect on cardiovascular outcomes. However, yes. despite these uncertainties, inclizaran is still considered cost-effective in people who have previously had a cardiovascular event and whose cholesterol remains high after they have had maximum tolerated lipid lowering therapy. Surrogate endpoints have been used in all NICE appraisals in this therapy area and as the signatories to the letter will know, LDLC levels are widely accepted surrogate for cardiovascular risk. Is it that last point that the, the two of you disagree with, this idea that high levels of LDL cholesterol actually increase cardiovascular risk? Is that the bone of contention here? 
Asim, do you want to jump in or do you want me to? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'll just add in, Alex, it's a really good question. So I think the first thing to say is that very high levels of LDL, people with familial hyperlipidemia, which are one of the groups that NICE are talking about, is associated uh, with increased cardiovascular risk. However, myself and Malcolm actually involved in research together, we looked at FH, and what we found is that people who develop heart disease versus the ones that don't, and there's a huge number of people with familial hyperlipidemia without treatment will not develop heart disease prematurely, there was no difference in the LDL. So it's got nothing probably to do with the LDL levels. The other thing to add in, we talk about potential harm, because as doctors, you know, the first rule, first part of the Hippocratic Oath, first do no harm. Is there any problem with lowering cholesterol to very low levels. And in fact, in general, the largest study, latest study carried out and published in the BMJ last year, uh, a Danish study looking at 100,000 people over a 10 year period, age 20 to 80, found that very low levels of LDL, less than 1.8, and many of these people are going to be pushed by this drug into those low levels, had the highest association with all cause mortality, with increased risk of death. And from two mechanisms one is there is an association with low LDL cholesterol, low cholesterol, and cancer. And the other one is it affects the immune system as well. The cholesterol is really important for the immune system. So, what they did conclude is the optimal level of LDL, which is completely contradictory to years of biased research, if you like, was between sort of 3.4 and 3.9, 3.6. Um, and this is actually much, much higher than what doctors are being recommended to tell their patients to lower their cholesterol to. So it's a real mess. We need some independent scrutiny here. And one thing I must also mention is that, um, you know, a couple of years ago, 2019, Norman Lamb, who was then chair of the uh, scientific um, uh, committee on scientific integrity in Parliament, um, actually, we, uh, we wrote a letter to him, myself, and editor of the BMJ, calling for an independent investigation into statin drugs because there's too much commercial influence on the prescription of these drugs. So this is a big problem, and it hasn't been addressed. And in fact, I asked Chris Whitty now, Chris Whitty, as chief medical officer, needs to really investigate this fully. Now, Malcolm, final word to you. Is this what, you know, perhaps you and Asim might deem a scandal. Is this about the fact that billions of pounds are being spent on a drug that you believe, frankly, will not have any positive outcomes? Or is it worse than that? Is actually prescribing this drug, in your opinion, potentially dangerous? Well, I think, uh, yeah, I mean... I talked about the money at first because, you know, there's an awful lot of money involved here but yes i mean the main issue is is this doing is this doing good could this do harm you know we're not going to know this until 2026 when the when the what they call orion 4 study comes out so you know in five years time we're going to say what oh oh dear we didn't realize that it was going to make more people die i mean this is why you have clinical trials and clinical studies how they can launch this thing on the public without having effectively safety studies long-term trials it's, it's just completely, it, it, it's, it's, it's mind-bogglingly ridiculous, uh, you know, but, but we see this as happening now. And, and I think um, just reinforcing um, um, Asim's point on, on cholesterol, the, the, there is a thing called the Biobank study that you may have heard of, which is being actually run by Oxford, by the same person who runs the CTSU. And they looked at the impact of cholesterol, not necessarily LDL, on, on the risk of cardiovascular disease. And they found that with looking at, up, I think, five and a half million people, there was absolutely no association between the cholesterol level and the risk of cardiovascular disease. That was their own research. And now they're saying, oh, well, we don't actually need to prove that lowering cholesterol prevents heart disease because we have this wonderful measurement and we know that it does. And yet, actually, they know that it doesn't. It is, you know, it, it, to me, we should be storming Parliament with pitchforks and and, and flaming barrels of tar. And, and, and everyone should be jumping up and down, waving banners going, this is utterly ridiculous. And yet, somehow or other, it cannot, it cannot, we cannot seem to get the public or MPs or anybody to pay the slightest attention to what I think, as Asim says, is a monumental scandal that's going on right in front of our eyes. We have to do something about it. Well, doctors Malhotra and Kendrick, thank you so much for coming on today and lifting the lid on this topic and do keep us updated. And here at GB News, we always have a platform for those who are trying to get the truth out there. Well, we also tried to get a response from the pharmaceutical company who developed the Inclisiran drug, but they did not respond. You're watching The Afternoon Agenda with me, Alex Phillips. Lots more to come in the next hour, so do stay with us.